Hey. <laughs> Peace and love, everyone. Um, I hope that you are doing well, wherever you may be. Um, I just wanted to do a quick live. I haven't done one in a while, so I wanted to hop on here. And um, I wanted to talk about herb and alcohol and connecting to source. Um, it's, it's such an important thing. Um, so, first off, I want to say that I used to smoke. I used to be a very heavy, heavy smoker. Hey, everyone that's in there, in the room. <clears throat> I used to be a really, really heavy smoker when I lived in the U.S. And for a couple reasons. I mean, I, I understood the medicinal properties of marijuana. I understood the history of it. Um, it is a culture, cultural thing. Peace and love, Luna. Peace and love, David. Um, peace and love, Tahuti. How are you? Um, so it, it, it's... Um, Oh, I lost my train of thought. But anyway, when I was in the U.S., I used to... Hey! <laughs> hey, Cal, what's up? Um, when I was in the U.S., I used to smoke heavy. And, um, you know, leaving the U.S., I realized a few things about me and my relationship with marijuana. I was smoking because I really didn't like to deal with the day-to-day -day things that, that were going on. Um, peace and love to you. Um... I didn't want to deal with it. I, I didn't know how to handle it. I was tired of, you know, the people around me not really understanding um, what I was saying or what I was going through or not recognizing the signs that, you know, we were in a bad state. So I used to smoke. And I did it in college. I used to smoke and go to class or smoke and um, do my homework, study for tests and things like that. I used to smoke when I was depressed. I used to smoke when I was so aggravated and I didn't have an appetite and I knew that smoking would give me the munchies. So I was doing it for all the wrong reasons. I was doing it as a way to kind of camouflage the things that I was dealing with. And um, before I came to Costa Rica, I had quit for some time. And I came out here and I'm good for like a month or so and I started smoking again. And I'll tell you why. Um, I realized that the weed out here is different. You know, in the U.S., you have loud, you have dro, peace, Nori. <laughs> um, you have loud, you have dro, you have all this other stuff, and it really makes you stupid. Like, you know, back in the day, I used to smoke, and like I said, I used to go to class, or I used to study for tests, and I, I, I got good grades. Yes, Luda. <laughs> I got good grades, and I thought it was benefiting me. Um, and then, you know, out here, it's like it's like a completely different thing. Like, it's a completely different substance. First of all, like, the weed has seeds and stems in it. There's no crazy smell. Like, in the U.S. or wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Some of the weed has this really strong chemical smell, and you burn it, and it just smells like burnt plastic and it's just really gross out here it's completely different it's more organic like everything is completely connected the the leaves are still connected to the stems and the seeds and it's all this organic <laughs> beautiful creation right so what I had to do first was understand why I was smoking weed in the U.S. and why I didn't need it. Like I said, Babylon is a place and a state of mind, so you have to change your mind. You know, you could go anywhere. You're going to take yourself with you. You're, you're going to meet yourself when you get there. So you have to change your state of mind. And that's what I did. I completely revamped my whole way of thinking, my whole lifestyle, everything I thought I knew before. I completely threw that out, and I started from the bottom. Or from the top, however you want to look at that. But, um, so I started from there. And my perspective on weed is different. And then the quality of weed I'm smoking here is different. So I have this totally different perspective on smoking weed. I don't really suggest that you smoke weed while you're in the U.S., babe. Unless you're getting it from an organic source. Or you're growing it yourself somehow. Or, um... You're planning to grow it yourself or something like that then you know okay but i don't suggest smoking weed in the u.s and they made it legal out there so yeah i don't really trust anything that the government rallies for i don't mm -mm, I, I don't i don't do that 
So that makes me want to do the complete opposite, <laughs> which means not smoke at all. Um, and weed is natural. You know, I know a lot of people say, um, and Kella, I'll get to your, uh, I'll get to your message. Um, I know a lot of people say, you know, you shouldn't have smoke in your body and things like that, which is true. You know, I could get with that. Your body is your temple. You got to protect it. However, I feel that because my perspective on weed is different, I, I, I can understand how you can use it for your benefit. Like when I smoke, I'm either chilling, I'm talking, I'm having conscious conversations or I'm creating in my mind, I'm pure, I'm manifesting. Like I might zone out for like two minutes because I'm building this whole other world that I want for myself or this whole other experience or I'm just vibing off of the energies I feel around me. Um, right now I'm surrounded by amazing beings who are spiritual and they're beautiful and they're organic and I love that. So we just build, <laughs> we just build and we vibe off of each other. And, um, and that's a beautiful thing. And, um, you know, my nationality is, I'm a native to the U.S., you know, Cherokee, you know, straight up, my grandma, all of that, whatever. But, um, the shamans used to smoke. The shamans used to drink. There's a place for all these things. Um, you know, they used to drink the alcohol because it connects you to that spirit realm. They used to do ayahuasca because it connects you to source. It does. You can't deny that fact. However, you have to understand how you're using it and how you feel about it. You have to have a real profound respect, <laughs> respect for it um, in order to use it, in order to understand it. So, um, so yeah, so with alcohol, I do want to make my own wine because I really love wine. <laughs> I really love red wine. Um, since I've been here, I have, I have drank, uh, I've had partaken of wine, uh, not to get drunk, never, ever, ever to get drunk, just to, because alcohol does a, other, um, a, a job, you know, they call it spirits, it opens you up, like I said, with weed, it connects you to source, it connects you to these other realms, you just have to make sure you're using it wisely, um, so alcohol does that, the shamans used to drink, they used to, um, utilize alcohol they used to go into their tps and they used to just be by themselves and they used to they used to smoke and they used to drink and they used to connect with the spirit world and that is my intention that is my intention when i partake of these things not to get fucked up and pop bottles and none of that like no so um and connecting with source like i said these these items these products they open realms for you if you know what you're doing you must come with respect must come with love and positivity and truly want to connect with source whoever you call God you just truly connect to all that is you have to want that where I am peace and love to you sage um, where I am right now is just nothing but beautiful green like look at that like how could you not connect with that <laughs> like the like yesterday or the day before I was just laying on the ground, like, in the sun, sweating. I'm in the mountains right now, but um, we are very, very high up, and the sun shines down. And I'm in the sun, I'm sweating, and just loving it. Just laying on the grass, just rubbing the grass, just laying there for a while, just listening to the winds, like, fully just immersing myself in all of this beautiful, beautiful nature. Can you see that? Like, seriously? Man, I love it. So, um, so that's what I do. Uh, that's basically it. <laughs> I didn't have a whole, like, a whole story for y'all. Um, let's get back to the questions. Uh, alright, so you asked me, am I coming back to the U.S.? I don't see myself doing that, um... To be honest with you, well, I will say, I do follow Source, I do follow Spirit, and that's what led me here. That's what led me out of the U.S. and into this beautiful, magical place that I live in now. If Source tells me to go to the U.S., I will go. Source didn't say that yet, so I ain't going. <laughs> I'm not going, bro. Like, 
I don't want no parts of the programming going on. And there's programming everywhere. Believe me, like, there's Babylon everywhere. But, babe, like, the U.S.? Nah, yo. They got all sorts of creepy shit happening right now. Like, seriously. And I stay in touch with a few people out there. And so I, I hear what's going on. Oh, my gosh, there's the monkey again. There's this monkey in this tree. Let me see if you guys can see him. Uh... How do I flip? Can I flip this? I don't even know. Uh, oh, wait. Can you guys see him? There he is. He's back. And he's so cute. I don't want to move too far out of signal range. But yeah, there he goes. That's that beautiful monkey. He was playing in the trees all day, just eating and relaxing. And he's back. He's so, so cute. <laughs> and he, he does like this wave thing. I don't know what it means. I'm going to have to look that up. But, um, so yeah, there's just so much stuff going on in the U.S. And I'm really not, I'm really not trying to be a part of that. And uh, there's cannibalism. There's that GMO weed and now you know weed was made legal like in Nevada recently and I don't, I don't know I don't trust it I don't trust it plus a lot of people still eat meat so uh, there's no way that they produce <laughs> he's so cute oh my gosh she's like staring right at me oh wait he just moved never mind let him, we'll just let him do his thing. I just get captivated. He's so adorable. But, um, yeah, so like I said, the government made things legal. Um, you know, everyone's still eating meat. There's no way there's that many cows to feed all y'all. Like, mm, I don't, nah, y'all gotta stop that. Don't trust any of the fast food. Don't trust any of the meat. What happens when y'all meat, uh, slow down? Like, what happens when y'all meat supply goes away? What y'all gonna eat? There's, the can, cannibalism is on the rise, y'all. Like, you, you gotta think about this. Like, a lot of y'all walking around looking like meals and stuff, so I, I would be careful. I would definitely be careful out there. Do you like white guys? Hmm. I like spiritual beings. <laughs> I do. And I love people who love themselves and respect each other. My preference, though, is for someone who looks like me. That's just my preference. It's not any hate. I love everyone. It's that's just what I'm what I get with. Um, let's see. Helps with meditation. Yes, it does. I'm in Costa Rica. Yes, Sage. Listen to Mama. Yes, I am extremely happy. <laughs> I am extremely happy. What is the good about Costa Rica and what's the bad about Costa Rica? Hmm. Okay. The bad about Costa Rica? Well, I wouldn't really say bad. It's just, um, I guess it's just like everywhere else. Like, I know here they eat a lot of fried foods and sweets, um, a, a lot of sweets and fried anything. So, there's that. Um, I had just left the Caribbean side and they're doing a lot of construction. So, they're building highways and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of development going on, so I'd say that's that's a downside. Um, I ran into a lot of people who were leaving the U.S. and thinking about moving here. So there's a lot of people coming here. So the tourist it, it, it's tourist um, places are on the rise. So I mean, there's that. The good thing about it is all that green, like. Oh my gosh, so much oxygen. And like I said, I'm in the mountains. I'm like 4,000 feet up, <clears throat> excuse me, above sea level. So there's nothing but fresh air. Like there's clouds that pass right by here every day. Um, so there's fresh air, there's sunlight. There are no mosquitoes where I am at. Um, on the beach side, yeah, there's a lot of mosquitoes. And they will mess with you. They will, especially if you... Um, or like me, and you're leaving 
Babylon and you're leaving, you know, a toxic environment and eating toxic foods and putting bad things in your body there, they'll come at you. They'll try to bite you because they're trying to heal you. That's that's really all they're doing. They're like, something's not right with you. Let me bite you and <laughs> help you out a little bit. And that's what they do. And uh, we, we kill them. And we shouldn't do that. They're really trying to heal us. Um, what else? Any other questions? Uh, any other questions? It's getting kind of windy out here. It's um, it's chilly right now because the sun is going down. Like I said, I'm really high up in the air, um, on the, on these on this mountain, so it gets a little cool. I have my little jean jacket here to throw on, but um, yeah. How is the job market out there? I don't know. <laughs> Yo don't say, it, puppy. Like I, I don't. I'm not trying to look for a job. But um, a lot of people speak Spanish. Well, where I'm at, it's mostly Spanish speaking. There are parts where you know English is more prevalent, and this is one of the most English speaking Latin countries. So, um, so there's that. But I, I really haven't looked. I will say there's a lot of construction going on. A lot of people are building homes here. So there's there's work in that. If you're a contractor, construction worker, anything like that, you'll you'll have something. If you cook, if you're into um, if you're into starting your own business, there there are markets for that. Um, so yeah, this place. I'm not quite sure how much it is a month. Um, my situation has been mystical, magical, like I told you. So mama has been looking out. I can't really answer that question. However, there are many places where you can get... Um, I heard of someone renting for $150 a month. $150 US a month. I heard of $300 a month. Um, someone else I know paid five, five hundred. So you can get some really beautiful, beautiful places for... Um, for a low price like where i'm staying at right now it's a three bedroom it's big and it's gorgeous there's all this property there's rivers and things like that so you're not really paying much at all um favorite tropical fruit in costa rica oh my gosh <laughs> the mangoes can we just have a moment of silence for these mangoes like oh and the pineapples Oh my god, I think I, yeah, I really teared up the first time I had one of these tropical mangoes because it was retarded. Like, the mangoes in the U.S. taste nothing like this. Like, in the U.S., the mangoes have, like, this acidic chemical taste that's just not the best. Out here, it's, like, pure sugar. Like, it's crazy. I can't even describe it to you. It's, like, honey and, I don't know pixie dust like it's a bunch of amazing stuff um oh and the bananas the bananas are good too but yeah mangoes and pineapples i've been eating those all day straight um anything else no other questions um i'm in costa rica i'm gonna go if y'all don't have any more questions Yes, Luna, I love the mango. <laughs> and I don't even cut it up either. I just hold it in one hand <laughs> and just go in. Like, please don't even talk to me when I'm eating a mango. Like, I'm I got nothing for you. But um But yeah. I think that's it, you guys. I'll let you get one more peek at the beautiful green. All that eye candy. And the monkeys talking right now. Hey, and he's looking at me again. He's so cute. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Peace and love, everyone. Mwah.